If you want to make a good looking ASCII game, you will need some assistance in order to achieve that. I suggest you to use end cursors if you are not a Windows user, and if you are, then you can use the Windows header. So this video is separated in two parts, the first part is about end cursors and the second part is about the Windows header. In this video I will only explain the basics what you can do with these headers. So end cursors allows us to create text-based interface, you can do ASCII GUI with it, for example. But as I said, I will only cover the basics, so if you want to make GUI, then check out this tutorial series. Okay, let's start off with setting up end cursors. All what you need to do is to insert the LN cursors flag, which allows us to use the end cursors header. Having done just that, we can now initialize and prepare end cursors for our use. We always have to first initialize the window before everything else. Now let's go through some functions available in end cursors. There is a function that can make the cursor invisible, so that it doesn't blink. If you want to make it visible again, then pass over 1 instead of 0. Usually you don't want to see the text printed out whenever the player prints to the terminal. So for that there is a function called noecho. You will need this function to make end cursors interpret special keys like for example the arrow keys. In the function we overgive the default window and in the second parameter we overgive true in order to enable it. C break allows the user to exit the program with Ctrl C. Now if you want to use colors, you can just do that by first initializing the colors. But before that we have to check if the terminal is supporting the colors. If it does not, we respectfully close the program. The endwin function restores the terminal after cursor's activity. You always have to print that function whenever you close the program. And Gedge waits for the user input and returns it. If everything went fine, that means we can start to set up the colors. For that we first have to write start color and then we can initialize the colors that we want to use throughout our game. Write this function to initialize the color pair. In the first parameter pass over the index which is a key that you will later need to access that color pair. In the second and third parameter we will give the foreground and background color. And that's it for the color setup. If we want to use a color we just initialized, we need to turn on the color by passing over the appropriate color index to this function. Now let's move on to positioning the cursor anywhere on the terminal. For that there are multiple functions available and it depends whether you want to only draw a character onto a position or a character sequence. Every time we print something, we have to refresh the terminal in order to see the changes. Also you can clean the whole terminal with the clear function. One last thing before we look into an example, I suggest you to create a structure that contains the needed information for a game object. So that you can always easily access the needed information for printing out the entity to the screen. Now whenever I want to print an entity, I can just pass over the entity to the print function. It's very convenient. Now let me show you an example. Here you can see the demo of a simple game. On the field there is a player that can move around. And below you can see the score that increases every time the player collects a coin. If the player tries to collect a bomb, he dies. At the top I have declared some variables. Here's the width and the height of the game's map. The three entities, the player, the coin and the bomb. Also I have a bool state that should determine whenever the game is over. The score and the map itself. In the setup function I set the size of the map. I allocate the memory for the array. Also I spawn and print the game objects all over the map. And I make sure that the objects spawn on the empty spots. Then lastly I set the position of the player and print the player to the screen. The play function is the game loop. The player can move till the game is over. If the player loses, I print a message centered to the terminal. In the move function I ask for the input and if one of the arrow keys was pressed, the player coordinates change. 
but only if the new position is in the map's range. Note that whenever I change the player's position, I don't clean and rewrite the whole map. I simply erase the position on which the player was standing on and draw the player on the new position. I then check if the player has collected a coin or a bomb. And if it was a coin, I update and print the new score. Also I erase the coin from the map, since it's already collected. In case the player collected a bomb, the game is over. That's all, now I hope you have an idea on how end curses can assist you in making an ASCII game. Windows Header is a default API for window management. It also contains all of the declarations of the functions in the Windows API. But all what we are interested in is to have an access to the console. In comparison to end curses we don't have a set function for example to hide the cursor. So we will have to write the assisting functions ourselves. Starting off with hiding the cursor or showing it, you will need to write this function. If you want to move a cursor to a certain position, then this function can allow you just that. For instance, this could be very helpful for moving the player around. Now there is an option to use colors. But before we can actually use a color, we first have to declare our colors. I advise you to have an enum which will contain the colors. Windows.h does already provide the green, red and blue colors. All what we have to do is to mix those colors in order to get different outcomes. We do that by using the OR bit. When you have the back and foreground colors, you can also mix them together. And now here's the function for setting the color. Just give over any color from the enum that we have created. Here are the functions for displaying a character or a text on the screen. Every time you enable a color, be sure that you don't forget to bring it back to the default color. In case you want to resize the window, you can do that by using this function. This will make the scrolling bars disappear. You can also clean the whole screen by calling systemcls. If you want to change the title of the console window, you can do that with this function. Now let me show you an example. Here you can see the demo of a simple game. On the field there is a player that can move around. And below you can see the score that increases every time the player collects a coin. If the player tries to collect a bomb, he dies. At the top I have declared some variables. Here is the width and the height of the game's map. The three entities the player, the coin and the bomb. Also I have a boo state that should determine whenever the game is over. The score and the map itself. In the setup function I set the size of the map and the terminal window. I hide the cursor and set the title of the console. I allocate the memory for the array. Also I spawn and print the game objects all over the map and I make sure that the objects spawn on the empty spots. Then lastly I set the position of the player and print the player to the screen. The play function is the game loop. The player can move till the game is over. If the player loses, I print the message centered to the terminal. In the move function I ask for the input and if one of the arrow keys was pressed, the player coordinates change but only if the new position is in the map's range. Note that whenever I change the player's position, I don't clean and rewrite the whole map. I simply erase the position on which the player was standing on and draw the player on the new position. I then check if the player has collected a coin or a bomb. And if it was a coin, I update and print the new score. That's all, now I hope you have an idea on how Windows Header can assist you in making an ASCII game. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.